Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, a part of a series for New Earth University from the Health and Wellbeing Faculty. My name is Juliet Bryant and I am a conscious nutritionist. One of the things that I see a lot when I see people coming to me is that they say they want to do stuff about their health. But really, underlying all the health issues is a deeper issue. And this is something that I feel is really fundamental to address, hence talking about it today. Because it's the issue of self-love. And ultimately, everything boils down to this one issue. If we are not loving ourselves, how can we make positive changes in our life? How can we want to thrive fully? How can we really want to be the shiny, vibrant beings that we are? if we are not loving ourselves on that deep soul level. So we may want to make changes, but unless we address these fundamental core issues, then we're never really going to get fully to where we want to be. So how do we self-love? What is self-love? Self-love for me is honoring myself, honoring and acknowledging my needs, I'm putting myself first. It's like on the aeroplane when they say, in case of emergency, please put your mask on first and put your children's on afterwards. And this is something that is so important, but yet we forget to do. An interesting part of my journey was I started out uh, in nutrition when I became pregnant with my oldest child. And the reason I did this was because I suddenly thought, hang on, I'm responsible for another human being. Ah! And that, that fear of letting that other human being down made me suddenly want to look at what I was eating because I was aware that I was carrying this being inside of me so that what I consumed would be going into my child. So sometimes we have to go about self-love in a backwards kind of way. And that's exactly what happened for me. I went about self-loving myself because of another human being. And I was having this very conversation this morning and about the preparation of food and how important it is to prepare food with love. Because whatever you, you're making, you're putting your energy into it. So if you're making food and you're stressed out because you've had a bad day, and you're, and you're stirring your food and you've got this angriness, this stress that you're releasing into the food, then everyone who eats that food is going to consume that energy because your energy carries. It's not just in you. It radiates out to everything around you. And I'm sure you've had that experience where you've made a meal and you've been stressed out or angry and it doesn't taste right. And everyone around you can taste that it doesn't taste right. And then the opposite, when you're in a really good mood and you spend time making a meal and you're preparing it with so much love and everyone eats it and it's the most amazing thing. Well, it's probably got exactly the same ingredients as when it tasted great to when it didn't taste great. But the different element is you, what you're putting into it. So if you're making food and you're stressed out and then you're giving that to other people, obviously you're giving it to yourself as well. So it's really important that we take that time to actually be in ourselves, to sit and actually feel and calm ourselves so that we're then sending that love out. And this person I was talking to today about this, she said, it's really interesting when you said that because what it did was it reminded me that actually I wanna look after my children. So if I calm down to make the food and I kind of de-stress myself, then I'm giving them that love. And in a roundabout way, I'm giving myself that love because I'm giving myself permission to have time to chill out so that I am not negatively impacting the food. But ultimately it comes back to, well, how do I feel about myself? And this is a really big subject. How do we feel about ourselves? Well, most of the time we are our own worst enemy. We are our biggest critic and we put ourselves down constantly. Masuto Amoto uh, did a beautiful book, The Hidden Messages in Water, where he looked at water and he photographed the crystalline structure of this water. And he looked at this water in many different settings. So he looked at it uh, when it had love and gratitude said to it. And he, he took a photograph of the crystalline structure of that, which was beautiful. He looked at water that had hate said to it. And this had no geometric structure. It was just a splatter of, of molecules. 
And he played different music to the water and he looked at how it was affected by its surroundings. And it was hugely affected by the vibration of the land, by the thoughts that were put into it, by the energy around it, by the electromagnetic smog, by the radiation from microwaves. Any of these things all changed the geometric structure of the water. So you probably think, well, you're talking about self-love. Why are you talking about water? We are made up of over 70% water. So whatever you are thinking about yourself is being stored in your molecular water. It's being stored in your cells. And this is a really important thing that we need to address because if we are putting ourselves down, that is being stored within us. And that storing of those emotions is actually being held inside our bodies. So it's really important that we start to address this, that we start to look at how we're talking to ourselves, how we're, we're, what message we're sending to our beings, because it is stored deep down within us. So coming back to self-love, first of all, it's important that we look at what messages we are giving to ourselves. Just like you wouldn't slag off your child and say, you're stupid, you're an idiot, why did you do that? Nor should we do that to ourselves because we are holding that inside us. And every time we do that, we're knocking away a little bit of our self-confidence and a little bit of that nurturing, loving energy that is within us. So where does this lack of self-love come from? Well, generally it starts when we're quite young and it gradually increases and increases as we get older. And unless we put active steps into changing this, it will just keep going. And a lot of people aren't, realize, aren't aware that they're doing this, that they have this lack of self-love. But then every action they take from that point is coming from a point of lack as opposed to a point of abundance. For me as a mother, I'm very conscious when I'm not self-loving myself because I find it harder to give. I will still give, but it's, you're giving in a different way. You're not giving out of this abundant fullness. You're giving out of this slightly resentful, why do I have to give to you? Because I'm tired and I'm exhausted and I'm run down. Anyone ever experienced that? So we have to look at how can I look after myself? How can I really deeply try and nurture my being? But we have to understand why we're not doing that as well. We have to look back and think, well, what has brought me to this point in time? Uh, some very good friends of ours, uh, the Rainbow Medicine Circle, have this beautiful song. It's, the past has brought me to this point in time. And that's so true. The past has brought us right here, right now, which is great. We're at a point where we can do things. So... Where is it that we can start to address this lack of self-love? Well, we can look at how we were brought up. Sometimes this lack of self-love comes from um, trusting ourselves and being told not to trust ourselves, not to trust our own opinion. And when I look at little children, this is very much the case. My littlest has a, he switches what he likes. So one week it's avocados and all he wants to eat is avocados and he eats them madly. The next week it may be blueberries. The next week it may be raspberries and then it's apples. At the moment he's obsessed with apples. He cannot get enough apples, five or six apples a day. I mean, great time to do it because it's apple season. And I let him go with it because I know that his body is telling him what he needs. And as parents, it's very hard not to say, no, don't eat this. No, sit and finish all your food. You have to have this. You have to have this. But we're taking away the trust of the body. And by taking away that, we're saying that we're not actually worth it. We're not valuing ourself, our being fully. So listening to what we want, what our body is asking for, is a really first important step to self-love. Because ultimately, you know what you need. I know what I need. We all know deep down what we need to thrive. And the more we can start to listen to that, the more that, that voice will grow. It's like a radio receiver. You know, it's about fine-tuning that radio receiver so we can hear it. It's always on. Your intuition is always speaking to you. Your body is always telling you what you need. It's about tuning in so that you can really deep down listen to what it is asking you for. So when we're looking at these feelings of lack, 
these feelings of not really loving ourselves, one of the things that I do to help me overcome this is I breathe. When I notice it coming up, I stop and I say, okay, hang on. I can feel this criticism, this lack of self-love coming up. So I need to deal with this. So I will breathe and I will ground myself. Quite often a lack of self-love can be a feeling of being disconnected from our community. I know for me, as I was growing up, I quite often felt different from others and I felt cut off from my social group. I felt isolated and this isolation led me to not really want to love myself because I felt I was weird or different. And that feeling pushed me away more from society and made me shut off more. And what this is energetically doing is cutting you off in your base chakra. Your base chakra is your connection to the earth. It's your connection to society, to the people around you. It's feeling like you fit into a tribe. And so when we have these feelings of lack coming up, I don't belong, why am I here, what am I doing, I'm rubbish, I don't fit in any of these things, then breathing and actually feeling like you have roots going deep down into the earth and centering yourself can allow this flow to start coming back. This knowing that we're really all connected, whether we know it or not, we are. We're always plugged into the earth. We're always part of the earth and the earth will always be there to nurture us and provide for us, whether our social group will or not. It's irrelevant because actually we are being held if we open up and we trust in that and we ask for it you know this is a really important thing to ask for help when you're feeling low when you're feeling like you don't have those reserves to love yourself when you're feeling unlovable open up and say to the universe say please help me please help me to feel the love that is inherently in me when i um, do work in schools what I like to get children to do, and in fact, I think we should all do it now, is to put your hands here on your heart. And the sound of the heart is the sound of ah. And when you make this sound of ah, what I want you to try and do in a second is to try and feel the resonance, the vibration of that sound in your heart area. So we're going to take a deep breath in. Ah. Could you feel that vibration, that resonance in your heart? Because that resonance, what I like to say to children and to myself, is that resonance is love. And when you feel that vibration, you know that love is always inside you. It's always there for you. Whether you feel it from around you doesn't matter because the love you need for you is always inside you. And this is such an important point. Because so many times we're looking around us externally for love. We're looking for things externally to make us happy. But ultimately, nothing will. The only thing that will truly make you happy, that will truly make you feel fulfilled and loved, is yourself. Is your love and your concern for yourself. Taking that time to really just be with yourself. Become friends with you. For so many people, just spending time by themselves is hard. And so what do we do? We turn to devices like this. It's like, oh, I'm by myself, so I'm gonna go on my phone. Or I'm gonna go on my computer. Which isn't then being by yourself. It's needing to fill that empty space, or what you feel is an empty space, with distraction. But actually, when we step into the stillness in that moment where we actually go, no, I'm just gonna be by myself. I'm going to be with myself because I deserve to be with myself. It's just like if you were with a lover and it was a new lover, would you sit there and go on your phone the whole time? No, that'd be insane, wouldn't it? But yet we can't have that same respect for ourselves. And it's in those moments of stillness with yourself that your true voice can come through, that you can hear what you need. But if you're, you're always listening to other people's stuff, how are you ever going to have the headspace to hear your own voice? 
and ultimately no one's voice is more important than yours yours and your the divine's and this is such an important thing that we we do we take that time to be with ourselves away from distraction away from internet away from wi-fi away from the bombardment of social media it all has its place but so does time for ourselves honoring ourselves so the first thing to really starting to self-love i feel is breathing taking that time every day to breathe for me i like to wake up before everyone else does and um so i have that time and what i do is i go into the bathroom and i get my coconut oil and i put that in my mouth and i do my oil pulling this is part of my self-love regime because i'm saying actually i'm worth it i'm worth spending time to honor myself and to look after my health i'm worth that i'm not going to put myself second or third or fourth or however far down the pecking order i would fall I am number one. And this doesn't mean you have to be selfish. And so many people think, oh God, if I'm being self-loving, that's being selfish. And I went through this for ages. It was such a battle and it still sometimes comes up where if I go and I have a swim and I take time for myself, which I've scheduled into my week now, at first I used to feel guilty that I should be at home cleaning or working or looking after the children or doing this or doing this and there's always an endless list of to do's. I'm sure you all know that the endless list. But I was never featuring on that list. I didn't think I deserved to feature on that list. A load of bullshit, excuse my language, but that's insanity. I was insane. We are all insane quite often on this front. So I had to start, the way I did it is I had to start scheduling in. I had to write in my diary, me time, gym time, swimming time, you know, yoga time. So it was blocked in there. It became like a client. I am, I am seeing a client. So in the morning I wake up and I do my oil pulling because this makes me feel really good. It cleans my mouth and I feel great doing that. Then after I've done that, I have a wash. And then I sit in my little space and I do my yoga. I don't do it for long. Sometimes it's longer than others, but usually it's about 15, 20 minutes. And I sit and I meditate. And if you don't know how to meditate, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a long, complicated thing. It's about breathing and just sitting and being. And for me, spending this time in the morning, waking up that little bit earlier before everyone else, really acknowledges that I am important. And it sets me up in that space of I have looked after myself. I've started the day looking after myself. So it's easier to carry on looking after yourself when you've set yourself up in that good way. If you wake up and you start dealing with everyone else, then it's very hard to get yourself back as number one priority. So after that, the next thing I do, which I feel is a really important part of self-loving for me, is I drink water. I drink large glasses, much larger than this. I drink two really big, large glasses of water first thing in the morning with a little pinch of salt. And what this is doing is it's hydrating myself. So again, I'm telling my body that I deserve to work at an optimum. I deserve to be the best I can be. You know, we all have a soul purpose. We're all here for a reason. And this is what I feel my mission is to really help people and help myself with. I want to thrive. I want to be the best I can be. I want to fulfill my soul's purpose. And I want to shine in the process of doing that. I want to have the strength in my body, in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, in my emotions to achieve what I need to achieve. And if I don't love myself, I'm not going to be able to do that. But also, if I don't love myself, then I'm showing everyone else that same message. The more you shine, the more you connect to yourself, the more you give everyone else permission to. You know, that there's the saying, we should lead by example. That's exactly what we should do. If you have families around you, if you're not loving yourself, then guess what? You're teaching your children not to love themselves. You're teaching them to always put themselves last. Is that what you want? I don't. 
And for me, this was a really big thing, actually. Hang on. This isn't just about me. This is about what I do for me is reflected in the people and environment around me. And if you look at the law of attraction, then whatever you think, you attract to you. So if you're always thinking you're rubbish and you're rubbish, you can't do this, you can't do this, then guess what? You're not going to be able to. But what about if you think, actually, I can. I can succeed. I can do whatever I put my mind to. The more you tell yourself this, that, the more that will actually be able to happen. And sometimes you have to fake it a bit. You know, it's like affirmations. I don't know if any of you have done affirmations where you sit and you look in the mirror and you say, you're beautiful. You're an amazing being. And that's hard at first. It's like, oh God, I don't look beautiful. It's first thing in the morning. I've got bags, whatever it may be that you want to start defending yourself with and saying to yourself. But get past that and actually sit there and look at yourself and say these things. Another really powerful thing that I have found in my life is Ho'oponopono. And this is one of the most powerful, powerful things. And Ho'oponopono is a Hawaiian blessing. And it means this, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. And just saying that brings tears to my eyes. You know, it's a, such a profound thing. And if you start saying that to yourself, you start forgiving yourself for things that you may have thought you've done. You start forgiving yourself for not loving you. You start forgiving all the things around you and letting go, releasing, releasing, releasing. Because the more we can let go of, the more we can release, the more we can forgive the lighter we become, the brighter we become, the cleaner we become inside ourselves. We're shifting all this stuff that's built up inside us on the cellular level, all this debris. It's like having a house filled with dirt. We don't want to have a house filled with dirt. So why do we want to have a body filled with dirt? So this is a really important thing that we start to look at, forgiving and letting go. Ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And my husband has done a really beautiful version of the song of that. So type it into YouTube and uh, it's the Perpetual Choirs. It's, it's, it's a really, really gorgeous version. Start teaching people around you. Say it to people. Say it to your partner. Say it to your parents. Say it to your animals. Say it to your children. Start releasing things, becoming lighter in your being. I really feel this is an important thing for us all to do. So hydrating ourselves. So we've got breathing, first of all. We've got setting time aside for yourself. As hard as it is, do it. Schedule it in. Connecting to the earth, grounding yourself. And releasing as well those past hurts that may have been there with your connection to others, your connection to people, your connection to your communities. Start letting it go. Say ho ponopono to it all. Hydrating, but also then looking at what is it that I'm putting into my body? Because if we're not loving ourselves with what we're putting in, then it has, it's a, cyclical, it's a cyclical thing. What happens is that we start off with this feeling of lack, this feeling of not loving ourselves. And this feeling makes us feel crap. So then we go out and we want to have refined sugar and refined foods and sweets and all this stuff that is going to perpetuate that because this all has a low vibration. So it's keeping us held down. It's keeping us suppressed in this state of not being. And then all of that food makes us feel bad and maybe help makes us put on weight. So then what, we feel worse about ourselves. So then we eat more and we create this never ending cycle of eating the wrong foods, which will perpetuate this feeling of self worth, self, lack of self worth and lack of self love. So we need to break this in a few different directions. We need to break it energetically and start making moves to really free ourselves up. But we also need to break it by the food we're putting in. 
And if you say, okay, well, every time I feel rubbish about myself, I'm not going to eat any refined sugar. Guess what? You won't succeed. It will be very hard to because you haven't put a strategy in place of what you're going to do instead. And this really is the key. Because wherever there is a void in nature, it has to be filled. If you have a garden and you weed your garden, if you don't plant what you want in there, the weeds are going to come straight back. But if you weed your garden and consciously plant your beautiful biodiverse garden, the weeds won't be able to take hold. And so this is really the key. We need to put strategies in place. Okay, so I'm going to quit having a chocolate bar every time I feel bad and rubbish about myself. So instead of that, I'm going to make some raw chocolate brownies and I'm going to have them in the freezer. So whenever I'm feeling low, I know I've got a supply of something that has chocolate in it, but it's raw chocolate. So we're getting all of the lovely chemicals that are in there that help to stimulate the mind, help to increase serotonin levels in the brain that actually raise our vibration because cacao is a very high vibration food. Raw chocolate is very, very good for us on a mental level. It's not got refined sugar in, so we're not going to fall into that trap. It's not got wheat in, so we're not falling into that trap. So we're creating a solution for ourselves that still is pleasurable, that will still make us feel good, but is not going to harm our body, and it's not going to perpetuate this endless cycle. So this is a really key thing. Also, a large part of not feeling loving about ourselves is that our bodies are running on empty. And if you're running on empty, it's really hard to be loving and kind to yourself because you don't have the resources. It's like if you were climbing Mount Everest and you had no food to climb Mount Everest. It would be very hard to do, but you knew you had to get up there, so you did. You climb it, but you're like this inside. Well, how can we feel love when we're like this? You can't. If you're like this, you cannot give and you cannot receive. So it's really important that we relax this stance into this openness. So making sure that your body has enough minerals, that your body is being fed is key. And when I say fed, I don't mean by a big bowl of pasta and empty food. I mean fed with nutrients, high density of nutrients. So what may this be? What could this look like, this high density of nutrients? Well, it could be that you get some super green mix, for example. You get some marine phytoplankton. You get some medicinal mushrooms. You get something that's going to start to really reboot your system. Marine phytoplankton is the beginning of the food chain, and it's a plant, and it contains all of the essential nutrients in it that your body needs. Amazing, huh? So why not get some of that and sprinkle it onto your food or put it into some water, shake it and drink it? Because that way you're going to be helping remineralize your body. Inside your body, magnesium, for example, has over 700 functions that it controls. 700 functions. I mean, that's massive. And it's, that's the most amount of functions that any nutrient controls. So if you are deficient in magnesium, your body is going to be struggling in basic functions, one of which is your mind. So depression can be linked, not feeling loving about ourselves, can be linked to lacking in these essential nutrients. So make sure you're getting them. The most bioavailable source of magnesium on the planet is raw cacao. So I'm giving you an excuse to eat raw chocolate. So, you know, we need to really address this and start looking at how we're getting these things into your body. Another thing that's so essential for our brains to really work properly and to feel good within ourselves are essential fats. I know for myself, when I'm not getting enough essential fats, I will get ratty. I know for myself, if I'm not drinking enough water and I'm not hydrated enough by four o'clock, I will get ratty. I know if I am not putting enough minerals into my body, guess what? I will feel ratty. And all of these ratty feelings within myself will make me dislike myself even more. So it's a two-pronged approach. But also when we start looking at this and looking at it at a deeper level, we need to think about the fact that everything we eat has a vibration. Everything we drink has a vibration. It has an energy to it. It's either going to help increase our life force and make us more vibrant, or it's not. 
it's either going to act as something that makes us thrive or not. And in each moment, we have this choice of what we're putting inside us and what effect it's going to have on our being. So I think it's really important that we start associating the energetics of food with our energetics because they are linked. And so often we forget this fact and we consume food because we're hungry. We consume food to fill our bellies. But that food is not nurturing our being or filling our soul. And ultimately, a nurtured, fed soul is so much more important than a full belly. And that nurtured and fed soul can be done in so many ways. And food is part of it. It's not the only part. Joy is part of it. Finding things that make you happy is part of it. And having that joy and that happiness with your food is key. Giving thanks for your food is another thing that is so essential. The more we can connect into that energy of gratitude, that real deep feeling of gratitude for what we have, is so important. In a few days, um, it's going to be Thanksgiving for some people. And for me, I'm part American. And my mother died on Thanksgiving. My mother was the American element in my family. And I used to celebrate Thanksgiving, but it didn't really mean anything. It was like a big meal with family, which was nice, but that was kind of it. And when she died, it suddenly became something else. It suddenly made me aware that Thanksgiving was a time to give thanks. Funny that, it took me till I was 21 to realize Thanksgiving was a time to give thanks, but to really give thanks. To give thanks for my family, to give thanks for me, to give thanks for all the things around us. And I guess because I lost my mother on that day, it highlighted the need to be thankful. Because who knows when life is going to end? So we should take every moment for what it's worth and really enjoy it and feel the gratitude for being here and being alive and being in this body, in this beautiful, amazing body that we need to honor. You know, this body does so much for us and yet we forget about it and we don't give it that love and that attention that it deserves. I mean, imagine carrying you around all day that's what your body does. It carries you around all day. It puts up with this endless chatter, does all these things, and yet it's not looked after and loved. How often do you give yourself a big hug or, or make yourself a divine meal and say, this is for you. This is for you. It's not for someone else. This is for you. Because I love you. Well, that's my message to you today to go and start doing things for you because you love yourself, because you honor your body, because you give thanks to being born here now in this lifetime, as hard as it may seem at times. But it's a magical thing, it really is. So I'm now going to invite my beautiful, lovely colleagues from New Earth, uh, Danielle and Jane, to uh, join in the broadcast with us. Hello, can you guys, are you there? I think you need to unmute yourself, both of you. Oh, there we go, Jane is here. Oh no, here we go. Here. Hello. Hello, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for all that insight, Juliet. Thank you. I'm I'm particularly drawn to the, the, the phrase, the self-love regime. <laughs> you know, and, and I want to talk and I want to ask you some questions. I want to ask both you and Jane some questions about that because to me it's essential. It's, it's the building block. It's the foundation of how I start my day and also what I do through my day. And I love the examples that you gave us. But I'm wondering if perhaps we could hear from Jane as well about what are some of the self 
love aspects or juicy cores that she has to her regime that are important mm -hmm. for her these days. You need to unmute yourself, Jane. Your microphone is muted. Powerfully silent there. <laughs> There we go. Amanda. Oh. Woo. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to, in, in the future, I'm going to talk about uh, how the subconscious affects self-love. Like sometimes it's so deeply buried that um, it needs to be treated with a, a remedy, like a homeopathic remedy, which treats the subconscious. So I'm always, I'm always um, healing myself that way. But I wanted to um, just share an experience of, I've had a couple times when I've been in a lot of pain, like something that's very tragic or very painful to me. And I've laid on the earth and I've just asked, like Juliet said, asked Mother Earth to heal me and my higher self to come in and send me love. And I have walked around for, after, after doing this, for maybe a week or two weeks, just with this love that is like it's 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 incredible and it, it just fills your heart and and you find yourself loving yourself and supported by this love energy and uh, i would encourage anyone to to ask when they need it because it can be very powerful i had an amazing experience um of love when I ate some raw cacao for the first it was it was fresh raw cacao and it was really interesting because um, we were in India and we went to this lovely organic spice farm Tanchika that we go to a lot and they have cacao growing there beautiful cacao and they're loving amazing people anyway the cacao is never ready because of the time of year that we go and it happened to be ready fluke in weather I'm not sure so the owner pulled this cacao pod off and opened it up in front of us and handed us this cacao pod which had this beautiful white flesh which was the mixture of mango and nightshade and these cacao beans inside it and I started eating it and it was incredible because I had never felt from food that experience of mass opening of my heart and for the next week, I was in this love bliss ball, like completely just loved up with everything. Everything was amazing and felt incredible. And my heart really opened. A similar way, and it's, you know, it was a similar way to when my first child was born and that feeling of like mass love when I experienced him coming into the world. Obviously not quite to that extreme from having the cacao, but it was still that heart opening, wow, this is incredible. And I think sometimes if we have these experiences of love, it kind of shows us how we can be. You know, because sometimes we think we're being loving, but actually we're not really open enough. We're not really fully there. And then we have these experiences. It's like, wow, okay. So that's what being open really is like. Okay, <laughs> nice. I want more. You do, you do know that cacao is a heart activator. It's a plant that's used traditionally throughout Latin America, South America, Central America, um, to open the heart. So to have that expanse that you're talking about. And it's beautiful because we just look to the simplest of things that surround us that, are, that come from the earth that can, that can do this. And through this, we experience that love. Now, Juliet, you spoke to something about... Um, you know, if you know that whole idea of self-loving, sometimes that you get it by giving. And to me, one of the golden rules to understand about all life and all energy is that what you put out is what you get back. So everything comes from within us. Everything is inherently within us. And so what we put out is what we get back. So if somebody is perhaps feeling that they don't have enough love in their life and they don't feel that being reflected in the world around them, then the trick to feeling that is actually to put it out because in giving we receive and it, and you can direct it towards anything anyone any situation any circumstance but one of my favorite self-love regimes is a smoothie that I make every morning and the smoothie has so many different components to it but I look at this this smoothie that I make and I feel it with all kinds of delectables and delicious things that I know that my body is going to love. And also because we're really busy people, 
life is constantly on the flow I know that this is an incredible foundation it's a building block to my day but in this is this goodness it's going to keep me going and you know if there's one thing that no matter what happens through your day and as it is it might get busy you know that you've started your day in this way and you've built the day from a foundation of love and then tomorrow you build another foundation of yeah. love you know so it's it's where we start and how do we give and when we give we receive yeah. I think I think that's so true um, I, I know for myself I've had the most profound experiences and openings and changes within myself when I've given and given and given almost to the point where I have absolutely nothing left and I just think whoa and then suddenly you're given the most beautiful gift in return from the universe I remember that really specifically at an event I was working at. It was the World Healing Project Gathering. And I spent the whole time just making food with love and preparing it. And I, was, I didn't get to do any of the workshops or any of the things. And at the end, this lovely man, Stephen Ash, who had these sacred sabais, came and said, would you like a session? Because you've missed everything else by looking after everyone else and holding the space. And it was such a deep, beautiful thing which wouldn't have been gifted to me if I hadn't given. So I think you're totally right on that front. But I also think that we have to be careful. Some people are people pleasers. And some people are out to constantly want to get that reflected glory from others. So they're giving from a different space. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you give from that different space, me included, it ends up draining you. And because you're not giving from love, I think that's what it comes down to. The energy you give with is the energy you get back. So when you're giving from that pure, open heart, wanting to serve, then you'll get gifted back that. Absolutely. It's all about the flow that you're saying, the energy. So to me, it's heart resonance. Yeah. Heart resonance flow is going to then be receiving heart resonance. But if we're giving from a place of fear, if we're giving from a, a sense of lack or this idea that if I give, I will then receive, which is fear, right? There's an attachment there. It's not, being, it's not something that's being given freely. Then that's what you're creating. So if you're creating from fear, you're going to receive fear. And I love what you're saying because also when you, you know, your experience with Stephen Ash was that, the you know we give when you give without condition when you give without expectation when you give when it comes from a place of love that love is then informing the world the universe the energy around us and it supports us and it'll always support us in a way that we least expect or even understand and it's not something that's linear it's not I give to my child and my child will give back to me it doesn't work that way it's it's the un, it's without condition without attachment you know and it's the combination of love and being able to be vulnerable in that heart resonance to allow love to flow and i think the practice is always like you two lovely ladies have said is um it's it's always understanding that we give to ourselves everything is a form of self love because when we create for ourselves out of love that then is the lens through which we can see the beauty and the perfection that is around us regardless of what's going on on but we need to create that within ourselves as you i like that you put on the put on the oxygen mask <laughs> that foundation yeah i love i love explaining it that um self-love is like a mirror so have you ever had one of those days where everything and everyone around you, it's just in sync and everything's happening and people are kind to you and you're kind to them. And I find that happens when I'm fully full of, so the reflection outside of us is created by what's happening inside of us. It's the mirror and, and you cannot tell the mirror to change, right? If you're looking in a mirror at yourself, you can't tell it, you know, I, I don't like that about me, so change. Instead, it has to come from inside, and then that reflection is what you see outside. 
That's so true, and, isn't it? And that's, that's what's reflected in our relationships with people. And when we start not liking something around people around us, it's quite often something that is repressed within us. Or I remember um, my husband used to go and suddenly say, I'm going to go and read and lay down for a bit. And it used to wind me up so much because I would think, well, how can you do that? Like, what, what, you know, this, this anger would rise up in me. This was a good few years ago. And I thought, I don't understand how he can just go and do that. There's so much to do. And I'd get really ratty and he would say, well, what's, what's the problem? And deep down, I wanted to do that, but I didn't feel I deserved to do that. And I felt that if I did that, I would feel guilty about doing that. And he was like, well, just go and do it. Like, what's the problem? If you want to read, go and read. Like, if you want to chill out, chill out. The washing up will wait. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and this anger, every time he did it, and I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. I thought, why am I getting so wound up at him? And then I realized it was because he was taking time to do deep down what I knew I wanted to do, but that I didn't allow myself to do. So sometimes, you know, that reflection, as you said, that mirror of, of others and why we're getting angry. I wasn't getting angry because he was reading. I was getting angry because I couldn't read. Yeah, so true. I've had that many times. And I find even um, every patient that comes to me, everyone that is going to reflect something within myself that I need to see. You know, we're speaking about mirrors and I'll, it was some time ago, probably, uh, well, 12 years ago. I was in the Philippines and I had this wonderful opportunity to have some private time with a pr very profound healer and in, in my opinion one of the truly most profound healers and teachers on this planet and um, I was so excited because you know I thought I've got this opportunity uh, what am I going to say what am I, what are we going to talk about what can I learn here and um, I, you know, I sat down and as I looked at them and this person is, is much older, you know, at this, at this point was in their late seventies. And uh, I asked, you know, what is it that allows you to do what you do? And they looked at me and they took me, took my hand and walked me to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, there was this little mirror and, you know, they're much smaller than I am and stood in front in the mirror and I'm standing behind and they said look in the mirror and we looked in the mirror and said I love myself I'm beautiful I love me and this is what they said to themselves and then went ah, you do this every day and you know everything is possible because you bring that love, the love that is all around us, the divine love, this world, this universe, is a, this multiverse is a love-based universe. It's inclusive. And so you bring that in, literally. And, and they did it with that really simple exercise of looking in the mirror. And you said it at one point, Julia, this is very hard to, it's very easy to talk about our faults. It's not so easy for us to say, what do we appreciate about ourselves? What is it that we're grateful for? And when you make that as a practice, as a foundation, it takes two seconds, but look yourself in the eye, in the mirror, and, um, and see how that transforms your life. Yeah. I, think, I think you're right that looking ourselves in the eye and really engaging and connecting with ourselves is such an important thing. And, and I've been doing it for a while, a gratitude book, but it's not a gratitude book about life, it's a gratitude book about me. And every day I write what I'm grateful for about me. And it is such a challenge sometimes. Because as you said, all the negative things come into your mind of what, you're, what you've done wrong. But actually, the more you do it, the more you cultivate that attitude of gratitude towards yourself. Because it's like anything, the more you focus on whatever you focus on, the more you bring in. And so the more you focus on the gratitude you have for your being, the more things you see to be grateful for. And so I think it, this is something that is a good thing, a good tool for everyone to do, is to, to, to notice what you're grateful for about. Take, at the end of the day, take a minute or the beginning of the day 
And it really sets you up for acknowledging what you're doing right. Because we're all doing so many amazing things. And, and yet quite often the only thing we remember at the end of the day is what, the one thing we did wrong, not the hundred things we did right. And it's the same, you know, if you've done a maths test or you've done whatever test when you're young, it's the marks, the X ones that you look at, not how many right ones, it's, oh, I got that one wrong. But you focus on, well, actually, I've got all these things right. It's amazing. And I think we need to, to cultivate that appreciation. And as I said before, that forgiveness of ourselves. If we do get something wrong, it doesn't matter. It's all part of the journey that takes us that next step. I love what you're saying. And I also, when I'm thinking to this whole thought about what you can do each day, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of extra time to do a list of what you are appreciative about yourself. Um, and, and it is a wonderful challenge because people can spend endless hours talking about what they appreciate about other things, but to talk about themselves. I think another thing that we could do that's really simple and it doesn't take extra time, but it's just creating spaciousness, as you were saying. And meditation, just that stillness to being present, 15 minutes is wonderful. But even if that seems to be a stretch for some people, then it's also just shifting the way that we look at things, like perhaps that cup of coffee that, or a cup of tea that someone wants to drink in the morning. Uh, maybe instead of doing that while reading emails, it becomes this moment to just savor and enjoy and be mindful of, of whatever it is that you're putting into your body and enjoying that stillness and that space. Uh, or if, say, your morning starts with walking with the dogs, instead of, I have to walk the dog, it's now become, you shift your thought pattern, which is, I'm going out for a walk and my dog is coming with me. So it's just sort of also just making those subtle but very profound shifts and uh, how we see things so that we can actually be receptive to them, to the spaciousness and the way that they nurture and nourish us. And, and I, I think it's important too to realize that sometimes these negative thoughts come in, but we can neutralize them. Just don't react, be neutral. And then the more positive thoughts, you know, send them energy, let them grow. Um, and, and speaking of rituals, and again, what Juliet was saying, I love to start with water because we are so much water. And then these thoughts can amp the, change the water within us. And then we're creating health as well. So Beautiful. Well, thank you guys for all being part of uh, week two of the New Earth University webinars and next week we have Jane which is really exciting so please join us next Tuesday is it Jane or Lewis oh I think you're right it is Lewis I think so you're the week after that sorry so next week join us next Tuesday at four o'clock for the next one in the series of chats so thank you all for joining us and see you soon <laughs>